I said salute to the untouchable True School Sports Empire. <laughs> That's over right, the untouchable. Not only the South Florida boxing scene, but the worldwide boxing scene. Well, it's personal between me and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. Okay. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire probably presents something the boxing game's been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, I wanted to make a follow up video to the Philip Hergovich versus Zhang Jalei fight because I had a chance to rewatch it yesterday. And you know, a lot of time when you watch fights over again because you're not as an emotional of a place and you're not as invested in the result, you know, especially if there's a guy you want to win a particular fight. You can see the fight differently in a lot of ways, and I, I think this was one of those cases with me watching this fight. Now, let me say that one of the things that I saw the first time that I also saw watching the second time with this fight was that Zhang Jalei really came to win, and he was probably the best version of Zhang Jalei you'll ever see. He may never, ever be that good again in a fight. You know, he really came prepared. He was very hungry. He was very determined, and he believed he could win, and he fought like it. So you got to give him a lot of credit because that, that version of him... I truly believe would have beat, you know, quite a few guys in the top 20, top 15 in the heavyweight division, you know, so he, he put up a great effort, but in watching it again, you know, I was watching it and I was, uh, this time I actually scored it because when I, when I watched it live on TV, I didn't, I wasn't scoring the fight, I was just kind of just watching it, but I thought when I watched it live that it was a close fight that could have went either way, but I think I thought Hergovic did enough to edge the fight and, and, and beat Jeng, that's, that's what I thought watching it. And then at this time, I scored a round by round. And uh, the conclusion I got to was that uh, Philip Hergovic won the fight. He won the fight by one point. I scored at 114-113 for Hergovic. You know, um, my interpretation of the fight was this. So, Zhang Jale got off to a great start the first five or six rounds. Um, really had Hergovic in some tr deep shit, some big trouble. And... Um, I remember like after the ninth round, so the, 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 the round where uh, there was that round of the fight, which was the ninth round, where Hergovich got hit with a, a hook and then he kind of turned his back and then Zhang ran up to him and hit him with a big ass straight left hand and, you know, to end to end the round. At that moment, you know, Hergovic was on my card. He was down by two points. He was down by two points. Zhang pretty much had him beat. All he had to do was win one of the last three rounds. And uh, Hergovic did not allow him to win one of the last three rounds. Um, he showed a lot of determination. He he really dominated the second half of the fight because on my scorecard, um, the only I only gave Zhang like one round on my scorecard in the second half of the fight. Um, and I, and you know what? I'll post my scorecard in a in a link down below so you guys can actually look at my scorecard and see if you agree or not. But uh, I gave Hergovic five of the last six rounds. So a lot of people are coming out and that, and they're now saying like. This fight exposed Hergovic, which in some ways it did. It exposed some things he does have to work on. But I also think it exposed some of the things that are actually... that We actually learned some things about, things about Hergovic that we hadn't knew, uh, known before because he hadn't really been in a tough fight. We're, used to, we're, so, we're so used to seeing Hergovic hit a guy and then them fall over that when he actually was in a competitive fight, we won't, we're, 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 quick, we're quick to say that uh, he got exposed. But upon further review, I'm actually more encouraged watching this fight because what I, one thing I know about boxing is that Especially at the championship level, when you when when fighters are just better and they know how to buy their time and pick their shots, and they're more experienced and they're just better. The windows to, to hit a guy are just smaller. The the timing that you the time that you have to hit a, a world class opponent is, is it's a very small window of time in the boxing ring. So you, you you're normally going to go a lot of rounds. And generally, uh, in boxing, the adage the old adage is class tells over time. Uh, you find out more about who truly is the better fighter as a, as a fight goes on. So if a fighter fights a lesser opponent, in the, uh, a perceived lesser opponent, but a dangerous opponent, and struggles early on, but then dominates the back half of a fight, then what that tells me about the opponent that dominates the back half of a fight is that he is a legitimate 12-round fighter. He's a legitimate 12-round fighter. He can win at the world championship level, and um, you shouldn't just write a guy like that off, especially if he has... The Olympic and amateur pedigree of Hergovic, especially if he has the size, the fundamentals, the straight right hand, uh, the, 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 the varying the speed of the punches. Like, like, like there was a lot of good things Hergovic did in this fight. 
uh, from the body shots in the middle rounds to the varying the speed of the punches to the shortening up the straight right hand as it, as as the fight went on. He got better as the fight went along, and if and if you if you rewatch the fight, you'll see that if you score the fight from round seven to twelve. You cannot tell me that at most Zhang won maybe two rounds, maybe in the last six rounds, maybe, but I gave him one. So I say all that to say this. A lot of people are, um, are saying that he got exposed and there's been a lot of talk in like the boxing circles and boxing spheres about, you know, Philip Hergovich being used as a potential uh, a quote unquote tune up fight for Anthony Joshua, um, you know, for his next fight. Now, let, let, me, let, me, t let, me, let me tell you guys this. Philip Hergovich, not only is he not a not only is he not a tune-up fight for Anthony Joshua, he's not a tune-up fight for anybody. And he's capable, more than capable, of beating any heavyweight in the division. This fight with Jang was um a combination of things. You know, when I had when I had time to think about the fight, you know, this is a guy in Hergovich that has ha hasn't boxed since last year, so there was ring rust coming into the fight. Um, you had what six or seven guys turn him down for the elim fight el eliminator fight. So he's been trying to get in the ring all year. There was that happening. Then his father wound up dying abruptly, which that always plays a role into a fighter's psyche. Ask Buster Douglas when it worked out for him, and ask Daniel Jacobs when it didn't work out for him when he fought Parag and got knocked out. These things can always have an effect on fighters, whether it be positive or negative, and it had an effect on him. So he pulled out the Zhang fight, which was supposed to be scheduled for the co main event on the Canelo. Versus Bivol undercard. Uh, so the the training camp actually wound up getting extended. He had a 16-week training camp. Factor in, he's fighting a very dangerous uh, southpaw power-punching heavyweight. And it's his first camp with a new trainer in Ronnie Shield. So a lot of, there was a lot of moving parts going into the fight. All things considered, I thought he handled it well. And we learned that Philip Hergovich isn't just a guy that uh, can punch. And a guy that can box. And a guy that has all these skills. But he's also a guy that has some character. So I laugh, right? I've been laughing at a lot of people because they really actually think that Anthony Joshua, if he's to fight Hergovich, that this is going to be a tune-up fight for him. And I, I want to go on record right now. I just want to get out in front of it right now if the fight does get made. If they fight, not only is Anthony Joshua walking out of the ring with his fourth loss of his pro career, he's going to get starched by Philip Hergovich. Mark my words. Because Anthony Joshua told you in, in his little rant, he told you towards the end, that he's not a 12-round fighter. That that you know he doesn't like to throw combinations because I'm 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 fucking eighteen stone you know all all that bullshit right so if he's not a twelve round fighter and he shoots his load early off in the fight and he don't have that stamina towards the back half of the fight to box with a Hergovich I'm telling you Philip Hergovich will drown Anthony Joshua and he will stop Anthony Joshua and it'll be the it, 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 and not only will he beat him it'll be the most devastating stoppage of his career because one thing I do know about AJ. Is uh, Anthony Joshua, one thing about him, he ain't really fought, like, I remember when he fought Vladimir Klitschko, right? I would say that the closest uh, opponent in terms of style to Philip Hergovich that Anthony Joshua was fought was the Vladimir Klitschko fight, right? And one thing I remember very well about that fight with Klitschko was that Anthony Joshua had a hard time defending the straight right hand, and he had a hard time defending the left hook. Now, I'm going to tell you guys this. If you fight Philip Hergovich and you can't defend a straight right hand, you are not going to beat him. I'm telling you that right now. If you have a hard time defending a straight right hand, you are not going to beat him. One of the reasons why Zhang Jalei had so much success against Hergovich was because he did a good job in pockets of the fight of defending the straight right hand, adjusting to the straight right hand, and countering off the straight right hand. But that's Zhang Jalei, and he's a southpaw. So that's always a bit of a diff difficult thing to solve when you're a fighter fighting a southpaw. AJ isn't a southpaw. AJ is a bit more mechanical as a fighter. Anthony Joshua isn't the best at defending a straight right hand. Anthony Joshua is not a 12-round fighter, even by his own admission. Philip Hergovich is going to get better from that fight. Mark my words. He's going to get better from that fight. Ronnie Shields is... If you look, look at the history of the guys, Ronnie Shields is trained. It don't matter if it's Charlo, whoever. These guys all have reputations for having sharp, uh, good boxing skills and sharp straight right hands. So I would only anticipate that that Philip Hergovich, as, a fight, uh, as, as he gets more camps than Ronnie Shields... You're going to see him work more consistently behind the jab. You're going to see the output of that jab be higher, which was a problem for him early on in this fight because when Zhang had his most success, it was when Hergovich stopped working consistently behind the jab. When, when, when Hergovich was pumping that jab out there and pro, probing with that lead left hand, he controlled the space and was able to set up the right hand almost at will and land with ease. Um, and he showed great timing in the fight. His, his timing... 
his timing, his grit, um, and ultimately his punch variation won him that fight, you know? And I really feel like these same characteristics, along with his stamina, along with him being a legitimate 12-round top-level heavyweight, are going to be Anthony Joshua's ultimate undoing. So I'm saying it right now. If Philip Hargrid fights Anthony Joshua, Anthony Joshua is not only losing the fight, he's losing it in devastating fashion, and he's, he's walking out that ring with L number four. And I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna go out right now and say that right now. So I hope it, I hope it happens. I hope all you guys in these Facebook groups and all you guys on Twitter and all the boxing fans that have been have been using his name to see, as a tune up. Man, it's crazy. It's crazy what, what one fight can do to a fighter's reputation because people don't know how to be centered when they talk about boxing. Did Philip Hargovich light the world on fire in the last fight? No, he didn't. Could he have been better? Absolutely, and I was definitely disappointed in this performance. But if you actually watch the fight, like again, watch it again. Go look at Zhang's body language from round six on. He he was getting beat up because Hargrave started going to the body around round uh, towards like the latter part of round five, round six. Hargrave started digging down to that body, slowly taking the gas out the tank of Zhang, getting that, getting working consistently behind that jab, controlling the space, and then setting up the right hand. And then, uh, you know, at, at times mixing in some flurries with the, with, 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 the, uh, with the speed of his punches. And, um, you know, he pretty much, he damn near swept the whole second half of the fight. And that is the indicator of a true world-class fighter. And I'm, I, I, just wanna make, I wanna make this video not, not only to tell you guys that I thought he beat Zhang by a point, but I thought it was a close fight. It could've won either way. Um, and I thought he won. I thought, I thought he legitimately won and he showed me a lot in that fight. But I'm not mad if you thought Jang won. I'm not mad if you think it was a draw. But I'm just telling you, I, I had Hargovic by a point. But coming off that fight, seeing how he fought from round seven on, again, there is little... I, 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 I'm going to go bet. I don't bet on boxing. When that, when that fight gets signed, I'm going to go bet on that fight. I'm going to fly to Las Vegas. I'm going to record myself at the Circus Sportsbook. And I'm going to put up some good money for that fight. Because I, I legitimately believe Philip Hargovic will defeat Anthony Joshua. And if he doesn't, then you guys can come here and say, I told you, you were wrong. But I don't think I'm going to be wrong. And um, if I was Eddie Hearn, if I was Matthew in boxing, I would swerve Philip Hrgovic at all costs because he's not going to be that guy when he fights Anthony Joshua. Mark my words. So leave your comments down below. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take care, guys. And I think uh, True School Sports, he's the truth. One of the best YouTube, the Best. Ooh, D, D. number one. Number one. Brandon, you've been there, man, and you're building up a good following Thank with you. us. Thank you. And I'm proud to be a part of what you're doing, too. Mm -hmm. You are spectacular. And, uh, you know, Thank you, man. All the best through school boxing and keep up the good work.